Likewise. Not, as, not a crowded schedule this week. Um, is there anything different that you're doing in training to kind of break out of the uh, the cycle that's been that, you know, to, to just reinvigorate the team? Um, we work, uh, I thought the, the, the boys were really well and I want to thank them and I want to publicly say that they are a really credit to this football club because they put a lot of effort in uh, everything we do. Uh, they train with a lot of intensity. I ask them to always to train with uh, with intensity because I believe that the the more you play with intensity, the better you are as a team. And we are trying to build uh, to build that into our into our identity. Uh, so, as I said, I love to work with this group of guys. They they really put themselves about even in weeks where you know it's difficult because uh, uh, the morale uh, general is uh, is not is not the best but for me the performance i we analyze it again the performance against toronto was a positive one it went down to moments unfortunately those moments didn't work in our favor but the general performance i think that we were not uh, we were surely not inferior in <laughs> to Toronto and uh, uh, I might be biased but I thought that the boys play really well uh, um, could have could have created a little bit uh, even even more or to finalize certain situations better but in the end uh, I think our performance was uh, was a good performance I know people I, I thought people, sorry yeah, I agree I thought it, I thought that I thought Charlotte were the better team. They just weren't the winner. I mean, that's how I wrote it up. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that uh, we will get uh, always uh, judge and the score line on the scoreboard. But I think sometimes it's unfair on our boys. Uh, and I, I don't want to protect myself. I mean, you, people can say whatever they want about me. But for the boys, I need to protect them because I think that the boys they are giving a game, uh, strong games to any any team. And uh, unfortunately, they have been unlucky on many occasions. Oh. Uh, and so I understand that you have to work to bring the luck on your side. I understand that. But at the same time, I think that uh, uh, we get punished very heavily every time we make a mistake. And sometimes that doesn't happen the other way around. But we need to keep going and we need to keep working. We work on different details because... Uh, we still want to play our game. Uh, we want to play aggressive uh, against a team that is very aggressive, like Cincinnati, that plays slightly different with three central defenders. Uh, that is a good team that they have been trying to establish themselves over a number of years now. And, uh, you know, eventually uh, you you will succeed. It's just to give people time to to put things in places. Even with the the lack of results, not getting the points, Charlotte is still in the playoff hunt. Uh, essentially, everybody in the MLS East is in the playoff hunt uh, at this time, from uh, you know five down to even thirteen at this point. Um, so a string of you know put together a couple of wins, and and anyone is right back in it. I mean, the results. Some worked, you know. Some of the results from yesterday worked in Charlotte's favor. Some, uh, not as much, uh, with that. But uh, the is, is there? I mean, in the morale and, and that you're talking about, do, do the players still understand this? I mean, the players so understand really well, uh, Steve. And uh, we we believe we want to keep going until until the end. Until uh, you know, we can. We want to do well. We want to. We want to chase. We want to be in contention. We want to be in the mix. We want to be fighting. Um, and uh, as I said, I'm just sorry that we could have some more points, uh, but we don't. But uh, you know, we have to look forward, not back. We are where we are, and we need to keep uh, fighting. Uh, to be still in contention because we 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 still are, uh, as you said, uh, you know, every team in the East is still is still out uh, with the uh, with the chance. So we feel we feel that way, and the players understand that very well. Yes.
because yeah, even when you're you know you, there's the excuse of being a, a first year team but when you're actually on the field and you're in the moment of the competition you don't even think about that all you if you're if you're an athlete you're a competitor you play to win and yes. stuff whether it's your first year or your your you know your 20th year and yes. something like that so i yes. could see you can see the pain in the players faces i mean that actually you want to see you don't want anybody to be happy after a disappointing of loss of uh, with that because that means they don't care um with that and you you can see that these athletes do care and stuff like that but you're also in a position as the as the coach the manager of a first year team to be building not just for this season but building something that will have uh, consistency going forward over several seasons and <laughs> Steve, I can assure you that I can assure you, I can assure all the fan base that uh, we we have that very clear. And uh, I understand the football, especially at this level, is a business in which if you don't get the result, you get uh, attacked, criticized. And uh, but I'm also very aware that to build an identity in a, in any football club, it takes time. And we want to be coherent and we want to, to bring certain principles that they forward to give to this football club because the richness of a football club is the mentality. As I said in the press conference, I totally, after the game, I totally believe that we need to build a strong mentality. We need to have players that train really uh, hard and with a lot of intensity on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, so that they, we can establish a base of uh, mentality, strong mentality uh, for this football club going forward. Then after will happen what will happen, but we need to have the right principle here in uh, at Charlotte FC. And uh, sometimes the results don't go our way. And uh, I will always take the responsibility for that. But uh, it's my duty also to make sure that we build this football club on the sound principle. And, you know, like sometimes I think I've been in the past uh, criticized because, you know, finish certain games with three at the back to try to get a point when uh, um, people say you try to win and then you try to win the game and you get, uh, you concede on counter-attack last minute. People say, well, you should have then be more defensive and... <laughs> And uh, so I understand how this goes, but I think the boys are trying to go in, onto the pitch now, uh, trying to win every game. It doesn't matter if he's against Orlando. And Orlando, we saw yesterday that even again against a big club like Seattle, very well-established contender to, to win the MLS, they can come back. I think our boys gave a great account of themselves. We were closer on the pitch. I felt we were closer to win that game than to lose it. And uh, we conceded, uh, unfortunately, uh, the last minute. The same happened with uh, Toronto. <clears throat> and uh, I can only say that I'm proud of what the boys are trying to put in place for this football club. I really am. Uh, it might take time, but we will not compromise on principle. We will not compromise on on doing the right thing. I can say, I can uh, assure you that. Yes. And uh, yesterday I had a chance to talk with uh, Adilson. Um, who you threw in, I don't want to say threw into the game because you had him for some training and stuff like that, but uh, uh, I thought he presented very well, you know, um, for his first time out, you know, you know, in the crucible of fire, you know, with, you know, with the team there, uh, he looks a lot younger on the Zoom call than he did on the field, you know, from perspective. Um, and, you know, when you, you know, thinking he's only 20 years old, yeah, and stuff. Um, can you give an assessment of uh, his performance and what you expect from him going forward? Yeah, uh, you're right. I did. I threw him, but I didn't throw him. I I can say that Adil. I saw him the way he trained. Uh, he brings uh, qualities that we like to this football club. He's calm. He's physical. Uh, can play from the back, can defend. And also, my experience in France helped me in that in knowing that the Ligue 2, so the second division in France is a very competitive league, really strong league. 
mm-hmm. from which many, many top players come from, even directly from that league, to uh, people that everybody knows, Kante and uh, Marez, they came from this league, straight into Premier League, straight to England. And so we have... Uh, uh, my experience in France knows that uh, he's coming from a, a very, very strong league. So he, then after you need time to adjust, but the base is there. Um, obviously, the expectations, when you play the first game like that, then you put expectation on yourself. But I think Adil is, he plays his normal game. Uh, I think he's, uh, he understands what we ask. He's a very clever boy from a football point of view and also... Uh, he's an intelligent guy outside of the pitch, very calm, mature for his age. And uh, I think he will be, he is and will be a very important player for this football club. Do you see him as, as he a player looking to learn from uh, the veterans like uh, Hooks and, and Walks and, and, and Carujo? Yeah, yeah, as I told you, he's very intelligent. And uh, one quality of intelligent people for me, the guy is quite humble. So he's. Uh, he listened to everybody, he questioned because uh, obviously he also had a, a football education in France, which we know that the, in France, football education is pretty it's pretty good. And so he has his own ideas on uh, his own football education, but he's also very humble in uh, listening and uh, trying to learn details on a, on a, on a daily basis. Because when you go to a different league, uh, you also have to learn a different way of living. You are in the US now that is not the same as Europe. So there are many things that can combine to make the experience different, not just uh, on the football pitch, but also outside. And I think Adil is uh, is very uh, serene. I like that quality that he brings to the... And I think that everybody likes the way he is. When you say serene, you mean a calmness uh, under pressure? Yeah, in every aspect, even when he's outside, because obviously we can see him also when he comes for lunch, how he is around the building. He's a very, he's always a smile, calm. Uh, he's a guy that uh, really brings serenity to people around himself because he has serenity. And this is a, a, a quality that uh, is great to have as a, as a human being, let alone as a player. And then he, he brings that obviously onto the pitch. Yeah, and, and patience in your defensive line, well, pretty much anywhere on the field, but especially in defense, can bring uh, a confidence to an entire team, you know, when they're, and that's what Guzman was very good at. Is he currently in Charlotte? He, you know, yeah, yeah, he's with us. He's doing recovery. Okay. He's involved in our, in our meetings. Uh, we want him to be involved in our defensive strategy, even though he's not playing. And we'll not be able to right. play for for so a while. You, can, you still benefit from his leadership. Uh, yeah, yeah, we want him to get him, okay. and also for his uh, for his uh, mental, you know, strength and for his mental involvement is important that he understands that we value him and uh, we want him to be involved also as a also if he cannot play, he's still a, our player, he's still one of our leaders of the of the team and. Uh, uh, we want him to be involved with analysis of uh, the our game, defensive strategies, and uh, is uh, is with us. He's in Charlotte, of course. Uh, okay, and, so he's another assistant coach right now. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go as far as that, but he's a guy that uh, we we want to to make him aware of the little adjustment that we are doing because we are still, you know, building, and it takes time in terms of principle. We are doing this. While the season is on, you know, it's not the most, it's not the easiest of the job because you have uh, games on a weekly basis that they count for points. So the job becomes for all of us a little bit more difficult because you want to develop the team as we, as you are trying to win games at the same time. So, or to get points. And okay. uh, it takes, uh, it takes a while. Yeah. And just, the last thing is I like usually a last game I covered for the observer and, and normally I wouldn't be writing about how the opposing team scored. But when I was watching the replay of Insigne's goal, mm. uh, 
because at first I thought it was just fortunate that, you know, he, that the ball got to him on the back. But when I watched it in replay, I was, you know, it just the brilliance, the goal was second to the brilliance of how he created the space um, to do that because, you know, much smaller than uh, Kalina, he just kind of was standing next to him. And then, um, you know, he, he didn't look like a threat at that point because the goalkeeper's, you know, much bigger, anything that comes in high there in the middle, you know, obviously uh, Christian will get that ball. But then as uh, Bernadeschi was preparing to take it, he just kind of slowly slipped backwards. And I think none of the other defenders, when they saw him next to Kalina, saw, has, has saw him as a threat as well. And so when they kind of were looking towards what they thought was more dangerous, he just kind of disappeared to that back post. And then Bernadeschi put, you know, a perfect ball to him mm. that um, it's just that kind of quality that is now, you know, I think it's been in MLS and I think it's increasing with players added like him like that. It's just, um, it, I just, you know, see it's those little aspects of the game that, I didn't see it in real time, but when I watched it on the replay, I realized how brilliant Insigne was in that moment to create the space. Um, and just, you know, and you see some of the moments like that, the whole, the the, the winning of the ball that got it to um, to Fuchs, who got it to Swiderski with it, that beautiful back heel pass to, uh, to Brandt for the goal. Same thing. It just, when those things come together is what makes this, is why they call it the beautiful game and uh some aspects like that uh just yeah it just and then i was watching you know toronto again last night with stuff but yeah that was and it, as an italian you you must have you know, appreciate that not really i didn't really appreciate that uh, to, to be honest, <laughs> if, but uh yeah no we know that these are to high quality players that they've got the their own way of doing things. Just a few week, months ago, they won the Euro. Uh, so they were playing at the highest possible level. And we know that they can do that. Uh, nevertheless, we, we should have done better because we were prepared for that as well. Uh, but, you know, the mistakes can happen. We just want to erase those mistakes because or to minimize them, because I am getting a little bit frustrated that, uh, you know, we have to create uh, every time uh, a lot of chances. And then uh, we give away cheap goals with simple, even though it was brilliant, everything you said is true. He, but he, we, we watched them and we knew that they can do that. Uh, and so it's frustrating because despite they've got this quality, we have got, I thought we created more chances. We had a bet XG, better XG overall. So it means we created more chances than them, more clear chances than them, <clears throat> 40, 50% more than they did. And then uh, just a, a slip of concentration can mean a change in the scoreboard. And that's, that's the frustrating part for me because in the end, everybody looks at that uh, and this is what, uh, I mean, by all means, put all the criticism to me for the results, but uh, at least acknowledge the players that they are playing uh, as good as the opposition in many occasions, if not better, and we don't get, we don't get what the boys, uh, the boys deserve, in my opinion. And that, and that can change. I mean, Bono came up big on uh, saves, both on Vargas and... Uh on um, Andre when he came in. So it, it easily could have been different. Um, for me, yes. For me, yes. But obviously, it looks like I'm defending my position, which I don't. I'm just focusing on, you know, to do the best job possible and to improve our boys as much as possible and to improve the team as much as possible. Then after, it will be the club that will decide uh, what happens. Right. And, you know, I thought I thought the team played really well against Toronto and looking forward to how they respond again, you know, at Cincinnati with that. What is the last thing? What's the status of the other two newcomers? So we have got uh, everybody now back. We have got Nuno and we have got um, Nathan. Yeah, Nathan Burke. They are here. Nathan just arrived uh, yesterday. Um 
Nuno arrived on the day of the game, so he had a couple of training sessions. I don't think either of them have got 90 minutes, but they could take part into the game. We will see how the game develops uh, while Adil uh, is, uh, is fine, as you know. Great. Well, thank you for your time. Safe You're travels welcome. to, uh, thank to you. Cincinnati and, and show them once again who the real Queen City is. <laughs> thank right. you. Thanks, Steve. I see Carol's not in here, so we'll go quickly to Carol. Thank you, Steve. Hey, Coach. Sorry I'm late, and I'm sorry if someone asked this. I just want to ask about Swiderski getting some time on the wing. I was curious his reaction when you asked him. Was he open to it? And Yeah. Uh, and maybe also a little bit about the skills that he has that enable you to to, to put those two guys, Shinyashiki there and, and Carol there. Yeah, I wanted to try because he's the only left-footed guy that we have uh, as a, as an attacking player. Um, as a striker, and so to start to try to see them both on to the pitch, that wasn't one solution. I think we had a few chances to deliver the ball uh, with Carol. Um, once, unfortunately, we didn't. The ball went to Ka to Camille that attacked the box. There was just uh, the timing on the ball were not uh, ideal, but it was uh, but it was good. We had this chance, and I think that Carol can create this chance. And also we had Andre as a number nine shooting a couple of times. Uh, forcing Bono making a save the other time, it was uh, just wide, but it's a possibility that we have. Don't forget, we also have other attacking players that for me can contribute, like Danny, like uh, uh, obviously McKenzie that wasn't, wasn't there. So we have uh, different options and it will be down to me to find uh, the combination that will help us uh, to do better. And um, Carol was obviously open to it. Did you have to do any convincing? No, 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 no. Carol is an attacking player that he understands that uh, not a lot of convincing. I think uh, um, he's, uh, he can play as a nine. He can play behind the nine with uh, as, a, as a two, like we did in the past with Danny or with Andre. He can play on the wing, coming inside on his uh, left foot. So it doesn't need any convincing. Okay. Thank you. you. Right. Thank you, guys, for joining us. We will see you.